Hello, good day. My name is Amir Spencer, and today I'll be showing you how to link SQL Silver 2012 to Microsoft Access 2013. So, first we need to start up SQL Silver Management Studio 2012. So, I'm running on Windows 8 right now, so all I just simply have to do is click on search, type in SQL, and as you can see, SQL Silver Management Studio comes up. Just select it to run the program. And it should open up now. Now, um, as you can see, this new window will open. And as you can see, this is our silver name, which is for in this instance Pearl, which is the name of the computer, and your authorization. And we're leaving that as is. What I would like you to do is copy the silver name because you'll be needing that later down when you to go into Microsoft Access. Once you've finished copying the silver name, all you just need to do is click connect and some options will come up right here. So once it opens up, what I would like you to do on the left hand side, you're going to expand databases by clicking the plus sign and you're going to right click on databases and select new database we're going to create a new database to link to so as you can see we have database name you can name this whatever you want i'll be naming this people just click ok and as you can see our new database has been added what I'd like you to do next is to expand databases and we're going to go to tables. So as when you can see tables, so I want you to right click on tables and click and select new table. Once you selected that, this window should open and now we're going to add some fields to enter in information. So first we're going to type in first name so this will be the name of the field and this will be the data type in this case we're going to select a nvarchar 50 and we're going to add our next one, last name. And same data type. Then we could add in gender. Same data type as well. And just one more, each. can leave it as n char but or n var char but we're gonna change it to int and once you finish adding your data fields all you just simply have to do is come up here and click save table give a name to the table I'm gonna leave it at default as the default name but you can name this whatever you wish so once you save your table what I like you to do just to go expand the table star or table options and you're gonna see your table that you just created which I left as the default name table one. If you want to see what is within the table as of right now, you could right click and e select edit top 200 rows. And as you can see, there is currently no data within this table right now. So everything is null, 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 null. So we're going to go into access right now. And what it is, we link it to access and enter in some information when we come back here, we will be able to see all the information that we entered from access in this table. So now we're going to minimize this. 
and we're going to open up access. Now we're going to create a new database. So what I'd like you to do is select blank database desktop database and select create. Once you have created your new table within Access, what I'd like you to do is go to the external data tab and you're going to select ODBC database. So once you select that, this window will open. And once it opens, two options will be presented before you. Import the source data into the new table in the current database and link to the data source by creating a new linked table. We're going to select the second option and click OK. And once you click OK, this option should open up. From here, what I'd like you to do is select the machine data source tab and we're going to select new. It will give you a new warning telling you are logged on with non-administrative privileges. Just say OK. Once you click OK, this window should appear. Create new data source. By default, user data source will be selected. So leave it at the default and click next. And we're going to search for SQL Server. And as you can see, have SQL Server right here, select it, then click next. Once you finish clicking next, let's click finish. And we're going to name it. For the name, I'm going to name it Assignment. And for the description, let's name it Project Assignment. Now, Remember when I said to copy the server name when we was back in SQL management? Now I'd like you to right click and paste that server name where you see which SQL server do you want to connect to and server. You're going to paste that name right here. Once you've done that, just click next. And in this window, what I'd like you to change, you're going to go to the option change the default database to by tick by the box and you're going to select the database that you created earlier. So in this case for me it would be people. So once you have that selected, click next. Leave everything as it is, default, click finish. Once you click finish or to test to make sure that the database is working, you're going to select test data source. It's attempted to connect. And once it connected, it will tell you test completed successfully. So once it's successfully connected, you just click OK. Click OK again. And you click OK again. Once that's finished, this window should open up. What you're going to do, you're going to select the table that you created, which for me is table underscore one. Select that and click OK. And here, and the window will open up with all the different fields that you created earlier. So what you're going to do, you can select individual fields that you want within the table. Well, in this case, I'll be selecting all. You don't have to select all. Once you finish selecting, you just click OK. Once that finished, to the left you will see the database that you created. What I want you to do is double click on it. And as you can see, the table has shown up with all the fields that you created before in SQL. So all you just need to do now is type in uh, first name. in all the information
once you save all your data um, you just need to minimize access you will have to restart management studio so you can just simply close it and restart it again connect and we're going to databases people tables and we're going to select edit top 200 tables and as you can see all the information that we entered earlier is here present within our database and that is how you link Microsoft Access 2013 to SQL Server Management Studio 2012. Thank you very much.